You know, when it comes to reading the Bible, I think sometimes we kind of skip over certain books, including Numbers and Leviticus. Some would ask, do the laws of the Old Testament still apply to us today? Well, today's guest says, yes, absolutely. Joining us now from Washington, D.C. to talk about it a little bit more is Christy Anyabuile. She's a Bible teacher at Anacostia River Church and the author of Delighting in God's Law, Old Testament Commands and Why They Matter Today. Christy, welcome to Bridge City News. Thank you so much, Hal. It's good to be with you guys. Nice to see you as well. So what really inspired you, Christy, to write Delighting in God's Law? Well, um, uh, what inspired me to write this particular book was I had received a lot of training and teaching in recent years on biblical genres, categories of the Bible that help us to know where we are in scripture, like the law, like narratives, like the prophets and those sorts of things. So I had written a reference guide to help people work their way through um, the genres of the Bible. And so I thought that it would be a great idea to not only give an overview of the biblical genres, but for each genre to write a Bible study that would help people develop tools for how to study that particular genre. And so this Bible study, Delighting in God's Law, is an attempt to teach Bible students um, about the law, but also give them tools and more reference material into how to study any book or any chapter of the law that they'd like to study. I think some viewers may be asking themselves, now that we live in the age of grace, the Old Testament laws may not really apply to me. How do you respond to that? Yeah, well, we do live in the age of grace, but God's word is eternal and all of God's word is for all of God's people and all of it applies, not necessarily in the same way that it did for Old Testament Israel or for the ancient world, but it's still applicable for us today. And so a part of this study is helping people to see how do I engage with this uh, material? How do I engage with this, um, with this genre? And how do I engage in it in a way that helps me to understand how it does apply to me today? So for example, when you read in books like Leviticus, where it talks about you should have no markings on your body, and people you know, take that to mean that we're not supposed to have tattoos today. Well, a verse or two before that, it says that men should not mar their faces. Uh, they should not cut their faces or, or shave the beards off of their faces. And so nobody would say that men shouldn't wear beards today. So if one passage in, within a couple of verses apart, um, we take away one idea and then another one, we take away another idea, then how do we fit it together? What was God saying? So for the law, I think that God intends to give us not just rules and rigid commands for us to obey, but the law is broader. It has to do with instruction. It has to do with teaching. The word Torah or Torah means instruction or teaching. So the law is teaching us, helping us to know what God expects of his people. And so principally, we want to look at the law um, in, the, in that vein, like what are the principles that God is trying to get us to take away from these, um, these books? And then how do we apply it today? So is the principle cutting a beard or wearing a tattoo or is the principle something broader? I would argue that the principle specifically in Leviticus is broader and that principle is be holy, be holy as God is holy. And so within that broader principle, then we take away how do we um, apply it for us today once we understand the principles underneath it? I'm thinking specifically as well, Christy, about the Old Testament, which says an eye for an eye. But then when Jesus came around and he says, no, 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 if you're struck, you turn the other cheek. So, I mean, they're really in conflict with each other, the Old Testament to the New Testament. So how do you respond to that? Well, the way I would respond is that what Jesus is teaching, uh, what we need to understand about Jesus and his relation to the law is that Jesus fulfills all of the law on our behalf. And so if we, if we do want to get nuts and bolts about it, we can say, yes, God's law hasn't changed. Yes, he does require, um, he does require a consequence for when we sin, when we stray away from him. But Jesus has paid the penalty for that sin. Jesus has taken upon himself the punishment that God justly 
um, gifts to those who transgress against him. And Jesus has taken that upon himself so that now in light of what Jesus has done on our behalf, the law is fulfilled in him. So as those who put their trust in Christ, we don't, uh, we're not bound to the law in the same way because Jesus has paid the penalty of the law on our behalf. Does that mean that we don't have consequences for our sin? No, we do have consequences that naturally occur um, because of our sin, but we know that through Christ, we are forgiven by God when we confess and when we repent and put our trust in him. So Christy, why do you think people believe the books that fall within the law genre are so difficult to understand? I think because a lot of reasons. We don't study them as much uh, in our churches. We don't hear them preached as much. And they can feel really heavy. And I think sometimes we impose a modern context on an ancient text. And so if we don't understand what that text meant for the original readers back then, uh, then we'll have a really hard time applying it for us today. So that's number one and maybe two. <laughs> Another reason is that um, uh, the law can be difficult when we don't understand the function of the particular genre. And as I mentioned before, the function um, literarily is to give, provide instructions and expectations for God's people. So that in the books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, that's the law. God is giving his people instructions. When we get to the next set of books in our Bible, the Old Testament narratives, we see how God's people responded to his instructions, how they responded to what he had expected them to do. And we see the consequences of people and their lived experience as they try to respond to what God was expecting them to do. So I think people have difficulty when they don't understand that the law is part of the grand narrative or the bigger story of the redemptive history of God's people and of the redemption that is offered through Christ. And so if we don't understand that, then we can have a difficult time understanding the books of the law. And so to make it really simple, I try to explain how what God expects how it filters down to us today. So understanding God's holiness, understanding God's judgment, understanding God's power, understanding the reverence and fear that we should have of God, understanding the faithful care of God and um, how God continues to call his people to himself and his desire to, uh, to dwell with his people, how all of that undergirds the various uh, books and chapters that we read in the law. And the more we understand what God, who God is in those books and what God expects in those books, it'll make it a lot easier for us to study and understand. I try to break it down really simply and ask very simple questions straight from the biblical text to give people a better understanding of um, a particular chapter or book that they like to study. Yeah. Now, Christy, you mentioned in your book that Jesus was present during creation. How does this understanding really shape the way we view the Old Testament laws today? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, Genesis serves the purpose of helping us to see the whole of Genesis as a book about our creator God and all his wisdom and all his power and all his majesty choosing before the foundation of the world to create a people whom he would bless and multiply through a special offering who would come through the family of Abraham. That offspring would crush the head of the serpent and would destroy the works of the devil. And in the sacrifice, when we read Genesis, the sacrifice of Abraham's one and only son, Isaac, the offspring through whom all the nations would be blessed, we learn in the Old Testament in Galatians 3, which interprets Genesis for us, it tells us that the off, that offspring that, a, that Isaac talked about and that Abraham talked about, that offspring would be Jesus Christ himself. And so therefore, all people whose faith is in Jesus, we are Abraham's children. We are partakers of the blessings that God had promised in Genesis. And what undergirds the law is this idea that God's blessing comes through this offspring and God's blessing comes through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we should delight in Jesus ultimately, not that just the law. We should delight in Jesus as the fulfillment of the law because it was Jesus, John 1, 1 tells us, who created all things as a demonstration of his limitless nature and his unrivaled power um, so that he could bless us through his gospel. 
Um, John 1, 1 says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And that word in the beginning was Jesus Christ himself. So understanding Genesis in the context of Jesus's life um, transforms how we read all of Genesis, because we know that that book now is about none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So how did you really decide which chapters of Scripture to include in a study? Yeah, I tried to choose chapters that would give us a sense of the whole of the book. So for the Genesis chapter, I chose Genesis 1, obviously. You have to start at the beginning. And, uh, and so I used Genesis 1 as a template to give us an overview of all of the book of Genesis. The same thing with the other chapters. I chose Exodus 20. Uh, that is the chapter that talks about the Ten Commandments. And so I used that chapter as a, represent, as a representative chapter that I could use to give a sense of the whole of the book. And so I did that with, you know, of course, in a six-week Bible study, studying five books of the Bible, we would not be able to kind of go through it extensively. And so I just chose representative chapters that I thought would give a sense of the whole of the book and that would provide a foundation that people could use as a, as a launch pad for further study. So Christy, how does delighting in God's law show the relevance of Old Testament commands in light of the New Testament teachings? Yeah, well, I don't want to give away the whole Bible study, but I will say that by the time you get to week six, that final week, it um, focuses on Christ and the law. And the representative chapter that I use to discuss that is Galatians, uh, the book of Galatians and Galatians chapter three in particular. And so the, uh, the Old Testament law is relevant in the New Testament because over and over in the New Testament, even Jesus himself, he quotes the Old Testament. He quotes the law over and over. He says, don't you remember what the law says? The law says this, yet I tell you. And so Jesus shows how not only is he the fulfillment of the law, but he's greater than the law in that sense. So if the law is telling you, hey, you shouldn't... Um, you shouldn't um, covet your neighbor's spouse. Jesus said, I tell you, anyone who looks at someone else lustfully has committed sin in their heart. So he elevates the law in that sense, and then he fulfills it um, on our behalf. And that's just beautiful to know that no matter what we do in this life, when we transgress God's law, we know that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who has fulfilled it. And so oftentimes the Old Testament will interpret and Jesus will interpret the Old Testament in light of him. Jesus will interpret the Old Testament in light of himself and the gospel writers and the epistle writers will interpret the Old Testament in, in light of Christ's death, life, death, and resurrection. So we can we can understand the law better when we read the New Testament because the New Testament is our interpretive lens for understanding the Old Testament. So what's the overall message you really hope readers will take away from your book, Delighting in God's Law? Yeah, thank you. As um, readers work through the study, I pray that they will see that God created humanity to be in covenant relationship with Him and that He calls us to consecrate our lives to Him in holiness. And even though we would rebel in chaos against his instructions, God kindly continues to call his people to fully commit our lives to him in obedience so that we might receive the blessings that come through our relationship with Jesus Christ. I do want people to understand that Jesus was present in creation. He kept all of God's commands perfectly, and he helps us to be consecrated to God in holiness. Jesus is victorious over the chaos of sin in the world and in our hearts. And it's Jesus himself who has committed himself to save all who repent of their sins and who trust in him. So this study is centered on the one who gave us his law and on the one who fulfills it. So how do you really envision this Bible study impacting our relationship with our Heavenly Father and understanding his law? Thank you. I trust that the Lord will use the study to help us to understand that one of the major goals of the Bible is to show us Jesus, yes, 
but to help us to delight in him. The word tells us over and over again um, that our delight should be in the law of the Lord and on his law, we should meditate day and night. So I hope that readers will come away from this study with greater delight in the Lord for his law and greater delight in Jesus for fulfilling it and that our relationship would be deepened because we would desire to grow closer and closer to the Lord in holiness and in obedience to his word and that we wouldn't see obedience and law as burdensome but we would see it as refreshing and joyful and we would eagerly lean into obedience because of what Christ has done for us. Christy Anyabwile is the author of Delighting in God's Law, Old Testament Commands, and Why They Matter Today. Christy, thanks so much for joining us today from Washington, D.C. Thank you.